Hello Matrix and welcome to the eighth video on calculus brought to you by the answer series. In this video we will start looking at cubic graphs. The general equation of a cubic graph is y equals ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. If a is positive the graph has a general upward direction. It could have two turning points. It could have a stationary point where the graph is flat or it could have neither a turning point nor a stationary point. If A is negative it has a general downward direction. It could have two turning points or a stationary point or neither. If I look at the turning points, at a turning point, if I draw a tangent at a turning point, what do you notice about the gradient of that tangent? Well, at a turning point, the tangent is horizontal. And what do you know about the gradient of a horizontal line? It's zero. So at a turning point, the gradient is zero, which means at a turning point, the derivative is zero. At a stationary point the derivative is also zero. Now a cubic graph doesn't have an axis of symmetry like a parabola has but it has a very interesting point in the middle. So if I look at the point in the middle of a cubic graph let's see what happens with it. If I take the graph to the left of that point and I rotate it through 180 degrees, I get exactly the same shape on the other side. Again, if I take the graph to the left of that point and rotate it 180 degrees, I get that shape. If I take that and rotate it, and so on with the graphs where my A is negative. So what is happening in every one of them is that point in the middle is the point of rotation. Now that point in the middle is called the point of inflection. And that's something that we're going to look at in a lot more detail in a later video. So to draw a cubic graph, I find the y-intercept by making x equal to 0. I find the x-intercept by making y equal to 0 and I factorize. The turning points, we spoke about them. If I draw a tangent at a turning point, it's a horizontal line, which means the gradient is 0. So what I do is I make the derivative equal to 0 and I solve. The point of inflection is that dot in the middle and to find that point I take what is called the second derivative which is the derivative of the derivative and I make it equal to 0. Example number 1. We're going to draw a graph together. So to get the y-intercept, I make x equal to 0 and I get a y-intercept of minus 3. To get the x-intercepts, I make y equal to 0, I factorize the cubic and I get 3 x-intercepts. To find the turning point, I take the derivative I make it equal to 0 because the gradient at a turning point is 0 and I solve for x. What I then do is I take my values of x and I substitute them into f of x to get the corresponding y value. To get the point of inflection, it's the derivative of the derivative. So I take my derivative and I get the derivative of that. So there's my second derivative. 
I make it equal to 0 and solve for x. And again, I take that x value and I substitute it into f of x to get the corresponding y value. Now, to draw my graph, the y-intercept is minus 3. The x-intercepts, I have three of them. There they are there. The turning points, there are the two turning points. And the point of inflection is that middle point. So there is my graph of f of x. In example number two, I want you to draw a graph yourself. I want you to show the intercepts with the axes and the coordinates of the turning points and the point of inflection. So I want you to pause the video. I want you to try it yourself and then we will do it together. The y-intercept is minus 12. To get the x-intercepts, I make y equal to 0. And I only get two x-intercepts. Now what happens if I get two x-intercepts is one of the x-intercepts will actually be a turning point. So whichever one has the repeated bracket, that one will not only be an x-intercept, but it will also be a turning point. I then get the derivative and I make it equal to zero so that I can find the turning points. I solve for x. I substitute them back into f of x to get their corresponding y values. The point of inflection, I take the derivative of the derivative. I make it equal to zero and I solve for x. I get the corresponding y value by substituting into f of x. So now all I need to do is I need to plot this. I have a y-intercept. I have two x-intercepts. My turning points. There's one. Notice that x-intercept is the turning point. And there is my point of inflection. In example number three, I give you all sorts of information and I ask you to draw a graph of f of x. So what I want you to do is I want you to pause the video, I want you to try this yourself and then we will do it together. In the first one, I give you that f of 0 is minus 18. So when x is 0, y is minus 18. So that's a y-intercept. f of 3 is 0. So when x is 3, y is 0. So that's an x-intercept. f dash minus 1 is 0, which means when x is minus 1, I have a turning point. f dash 1 is 0. So when x is 1, I have another turning point. f of minus 1 is minus 16. So when x is minus 1, y is minus 16. f of 1 is minus 20. So when x is 1, y is minus 20. And then I'm told that the derivative is negative when x lies between minus 1 and 1. So between minus 1 and 1, my graph is decreasing. And there I have my cubic. You should now understand how to draw a cubic graph. Thank you for watching this video. Check out the video description below for practice questions from our study guides. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. 
So that's it for now from the answer series, your key to exam success.